Good morning, guys, and welcome to the final tennis ball beach clean collection. Well, I shouldn't say the final, but I guess it's day three, and it's the final one that I will be out here myself doing tennis ball cleaning. And I'm actually really excited because this is a much different spot than where I've been looking for tennis balls in the past. And I actually found this spot via Google Maps searching. So basically, I went on Google Maps and I did a satellite view of areas where there are tennis courts along the water and actually right over there um, maybe I don't know quarter of a mile from here there's like six or seven tennis courts right on the water you can drive right by them and actually on the way out to this beach park I saw a thousand tennis balls on this court it looked like I don't know maybe hundreds where people were just playing tennis and my theory was a certain amount of those balls are going to go over the fence over the years wind up in this harbory area and then just sort of settle and collect over time and lo and behold already you can see there's old very degraded tennis balls all around me this is crazy I, I you know, sometimes I think that I'm nuts for thinking that I'm gonna find this stuff out here but then I do and it's like okay that confirms kind of <laughs> that you can kind of piece together some of this uh, theory just based on observation and and work over time so um, I assume the tide carries this pretty far down this harbor, so I'm going to walk along a little bit and see how many we can collect today because the previous tennis ball beach clean collections of day one and two, I think day one was 180 I collected, and that was an area near a dog park where I think people toss tennis balls to their dogs, and uh, those get lost over time. And then the second one, I got almost 200 tennis balls in one beach clean. And that was right along some cliffs with the tennis court. So I would imagine here that there's going to be a ton as well, because I don't, I didn't even know of this spot as a potential tennis ball beach cleanup area. And there's other trash, of course. There's always trash. So I'll pick up some of that maybe to talk about at the end as well. But lots of tennis balls already. So I, I'm almost disturbed that my instincts were correct with this. But yeah, let's uh, do a uh, picking. It's a beautiful day, a little cloudy, but not very windy and like 70 degrees. It's, it's perfect temperature. So yeah, enjoy the sights, come walk a little, enjoy some nature and get trashed along the way as always. So it seems like there's a ton of old, old, old balls in these uh, kind of higher tide line areas, which makes sense because that's where they would settle as really high tides kind of abandon them in places, right? If you think about like lower tides and tides do shift, obviously with the season and months, a lower tide might bring a beach tennis ball or trash in general you know, somewhere along a shoreline, but then the next tide comes in and brings it back out. But when you have a particularly high tide because of moon sun alignment or storm surge or something like that, it makes sense that it would get abandoned up a little higher along the beach. So finding a lot of these really old ones um, in these like areas uh, that are pretty consistently at the same elevation, which is interesting. So yeah, let's see how many we can collect total because so far <laughs> there's plenty, sadly. You'll notice that we ended on the more oceany side of this harbor because that's where this all started, <laughs> was at the ocean and me just walking down the beach and finding tennis balls and wondering, hey, what the heck's going on with all of that, right? And so today, let me just shift because if you've watched my previous tennis ball videos, the sand spiders are in full bloom, which is unfortunate that I have to say a phrase like sand spiders, but apparently there's lots of spiders at the beach and I'm not a spider guy, <laughs> so I have to be ready to flee. Um, but yeah, anyways, like I was saying, 
that's how this all started. Obviously, uh, if you go back and you watch the previous couple of days of the recycling tennis ball challenge, you know, you, you'll see I found many more and people have been pretty amazed and stumped at the fact that I've been able to find hundreds of tennis balls in just a few days beach clean. Uh, like I said, the first day, I think it was about 180, the second day almost 200. And today I count, I got about 45, which <laughs> comparatively doesn't seem like a lot, right? But that's still a crazy amount of tennis balls to find in just, again, a one, uh, really one hour about beach clean, maybe, maybe a couple hours actually, uh, if you add up all the time walking too, but between spots and yeah, I think really all I want to say about all of this, because I've covered many of these points in the previous two videos, is that you kind of learn the more you do something, and I've learned a lot about the sources of this type of ocean pollution, and obviously it is a big issue. Again, if you've uh, seen my previous videos, you know that Wilson Sporting Goods and their partners, their recycling partners at Recycle Balls, sent me free recycling bins for tennis balls because they saw one of my other tennis ball beach clean videos and of course I'm recycling and collecting all sorts of stuff I even see more over there I stopped because my bag is finally full but this stuff just doesn't end but there's a lot of interesting and good innovative stuff happening um, and that's sort of again the point of these videos is to really just share what I'm finding and and hear from other people about what they're doing and what ideas and solutions they might have because the first times I collected tennis balls I had no idea what to do with them and now Wilson Sporting Goods saw my previous video and reached out to me and that's what I say about a lot of this other pollution I don't know what to do with batteries I find on the beach or other chemicals and you know nasty fishing fishing line and that sort of thing but I think that's really the cool thing about social media where more and more I, I learn that people are into these sort of niche um, conservation efforts and people who have the ability and resources and know how to do something about it and uh, what Wilson is doing with their recycling partners is a really cool example, I think. So I'm very excited to be able to finally recycle all of these. And again, obviously, you know, I still get the questions of what difference does it make, right? You hear that a lot. What really is the difference in the end? Because there are such larger environmental issues. But if you think of it that way, I think that sort of stalls out any progress that we can otherwise make. And obviously, even recycling all of these balls or recycling tennis balls in the end isn't maybe the end all be all, right? Um, the company that is going to recycle these uses the felt for like horse footing, I think, and the rubber to make new tennis courts. And again, that's a good step in a, in a more sustainable direction because they're not sourcing new materials while this stuff is just clogging up marine habitats, right? And dying in landfills. But I know they're also sort of working on more eco-friendly materials too for the balls themselves. So all of this is part of pushing us maybe in a better direction. And there's something to be said, I think, for the idea of critical mass, right? And having enough collective awareness where we sort of suddenly together realize that, oh, maybe there are better ways of doing things. And that's really kind of the goal and kind of the point and purpose here. So um, yeah, same thing here today. All manner of level of degradation brand new balls balls that have been degraded pretty much beyond recognition if you weren't watching this video you probably wouldn't know that this is most definitely the rubber core of a tennis ball but it is and i know that because you can see the process of degradation right where this still has some of the felt on it so really interesting experience over the past few weeks i know i appreciate many of you sticking with these videos for those of you who maybe aren't as interested in tennis balls because obviously I beach clean lots of other stuff year round if you have been following my other videos, but hey, when the uh, iron is hot, strike strike the iron when it's hot. I don't know the phrase, but if a, a big company like Wilson is reaching out to you to support, uh, why not take advantage of it, right? And that's going to be the conclusion of this tennis ball cleanup. This weekend, I think, after this video posts, I'm going to do one more video where I've basically put out a, an announcement for an event where I'm just going to be at the beach with my recycle bins and I'm encouraging anybody over the next week or so to as they beach clean and find tennis balls stop by I'll be there most of the afternoon next Saturday and have them uh, contribute what they can because I'm sure the Wilson people and the recycle balls people will send me more bins if I had more balls 
and interestingly, I'll include a picture of the recycle bins here. I think it holds several hundred, and I'm going to need more, which is really cool, probably. Um, so I, I think, again, that's just moving the conversation in, in a better direction, because I think part of the problem is people often feel so helpless with being able to do anything. And it's because not one of one of us alone doesn't necessarily have all the answers or solutions. But this is the cool thing about sharing these stories and talking about what more we can do together. And yeah, that's really what I've, I guess, sort of learned <laughs> through all of this tennis ball beach cleaning. And like I said at the beginning of the video on the inside part of this harbor, a lot more tennis balls at those high tide lines in the harbor where obviously, you know, tennis balls are kind of relatively heavy compared to other plastic pollution. Um, those tennis balls settle at high tide. And here on the ocean side, didn't find a ton walking down about the same distance. I found maybe three or four, which I assume rather than from the tennis courts on the inside of the harbor are probably more likely from people playing fetch with their dog, like I said. So those are really the two main sources of tennis ball pollution from my experience. And what can we do about that? That's a, another good question. And again, I'm not like proselytizing to get rid of tennis balls or, um, you know, shaming people into doing anything different. But this is, you know, how we talk about issues and maybe come up with different solutions or alternatives and that sort of thing. And that's what we're going to keep doing with other trash throughout the year. So yes, uh, shout out again. Thanks to uh, Wilson and Recycle Balls. I'll have that final video. Uh, I don't know if that will be my next beach clean video after this one because I kind of want to get back to regular beach clean stuff and there's so many other ideas I have for beach cleaning so I want to talk about those other items but uh, we will get back to regular beach clean adventures and there's some wacky ideas coming up like I've said previously I mean we're going to be going cross across the country trash cleaning this summer because I clearly completely snapped and lost my mind so that among other crazy adventure ideas is coming up soon so Anyways, if you like this stuff, um, please subscribe. Uh, it helps to, again, expose this to more people. I, the, Wilson would have never found out that I was doing this stuff if people hadn't shared my video. So I appreciate the, the, all of you guys who watch and subscribe and share and all that stuff because it does make a difference. Now this is all getting recycled. It's helping their efforts, which is leading to other bigger changes, ideally down the road. So yeah, keep that in mind. Little changes add up to big ones over time. I know other beach cleaners I talk to often struggle with that fact of, well, I clean the beach one day, I come back the next day, it's just as trash, if not more. What's the difference? And that is the difference, is that you are in those local habitats making a difference and certainly contributing to the larger, again, conversations and changes that we need. So yeah, again, thanks so much for watching, supporting all that good stuff and enjoying nature. I mean, come on, this is beautiful. I can't wait to be in here swimming again and it's coming soon. So uh, I'm going to, again, do wacky things. I have so many crazy ideas for the summer, going across country, diving for beach trash. Uh, like, <laughs> there's unfortunately endless ideas, and some of them don't work out, but that's part of the point. Like, you, you kind of learn more and, and learn where this stuff is and why it is where it is just by trial and error. So come experience with me and uh, learn from my trial and error so maybe you can emulate what does work on your own. But, yeah, once again... Uh, I can't, I, I know I keep saying it, but I can't thank you guys enough. And uh, we'll be back soon with new trash. And uh, until then, stay well out there, clean well, be well, and hope to see you guys on the beach soon.